Title I School-Wide Authority Next Steps Pre-Recorded Webinar, May 2020 Hello everyone, this is Monique Sullivan and I am the Title I Program Director for the Maine Department of Education. Welcome to the Title I School-Wide Next Steps Webinar. Congratulations on becoming or thinking about becoming a Title I School-Wide Program. This presentation is designed for schools who have already been approved for Title I school-wide authority, including Tier 3 identified schools, and for any other schools thinking about applying for Title I school-wide authority. If you have any questions, my contact information is listed at the end of the presentation. Now what? What does school-wide authority mean for your school, students, teachers, staff, parents, and families? Before we get started, let's see how much you know about Title I school-wide authority. Here's a quick true and false quiz. Read the statement and answer true or false. 1. Title I funds may only be used to support reading and math instruction. 2. Title I funds may be used only to provide remedial instruction. 3. Title I funds may only be used to serve low achieving students. Four, if a school does not consolidate funds through a school-wide program, Title I funds may be used only to provide services in a pullout setting. Five, Title I funds may only be used for instruction. As with the previous slide, read the statement and answer true or false. Six, resources can only be used for eligible students. Seven, parents need to be notified of students' eligibility and intervention plan. Eight, Title I funds may only be used to provide PD for staff providing direct support to Title I identified students. Nine, only Title I teachers and ed techs must meet state certification requirements. 10, PD is aligned with Title I identified students' needs. Hold on to your answers until the end of the presentation. What is the purpose of having a school-wide Title I program? According to the statute, the purpose of Title I school-wide status is to raise the achievement of the lowest achieving students by improving the entire school program. School-wide status allows schools to consolidate all of their resources, including federal, state, and local funds, to best meet the needs of students in the school. Unlike targeted programs where eligible students need to be identified through a transparent identification process, no identification is required in a school-wide program. Students do not have to be eligible to participate in school programs. School-wide status requires developing and, developing and implementing a multi-tiered system of support, MTSS, where all students have access to core instruction and intervention supports with individualized support provided to the most at-risk students. School-wide status allows a school to maximize resources and address the unique academic and non-academic needs in a school. With Title I school-wide authority, you will have more flexibility to leverage your resources to best meet the needs of students in your school. Becoming Title I school-wide requires a mindset or cultural shift regarding policies and programming. Schools need to update all previous targeted Title I programming and policies to reflect whole school interventions or multi-tiered systems of support. Core instruction is provided to all students with Tier 2 and Tier 3 supports provided to the most at-risk students as determined by a school's MTSS. In a school-wide program, Title I applies to all students. There is no longer a distinction between Title I students and non-Title I students. All classrooms are Title I. School-wide 
schools need to transition to referring to Title I classrooms as intervention or breakout or small group spaces, rooms, or classrooms. Continue with Title I school-wide policies and programming. Schools with Title I school-wide authority need to update their Title I handbooks to reflect whole school interventions and multi-tiered systems of support. All teaching staff are considered to be Title I teachers. In Title I school-wide programs, there's no distinction between Title I teachers and non-Title I teachers. Schools with Title I school-wide authority need to transition to using the term interventionist or another agreed upon term for support staff providing tier two and tier three supports to students. In a targeted Title I program, only staff teaching identified students need to hold valid state certification. In a Title I school-wide program, all instructional staff, teachers, ad techs, and paraprofessionals must hold a valid state certification. In a school-wide Title I program, all parents participate in the ongoing review, planning, and implementation of the school-wide plan and parent involvement policy. In addition, parent involvement and family engagement policies and the school-wide program need to reflect all parents and families in the school. Parent and family activities need to be available to all students and their families. Notification should be sent to all parents and families, including notices about student academic progress, school intervention programs, MTSS, parent resources and training, and parent learning opportunities. The annual meeting is still required and is open to all parents and families in the school. Title I school-wide authority allows the blending and braiding of funds. Braiding is when funds from several sources are coordinated to support the school-wide plan. Funds are expensed and invoiced separately. Think of a friendship bracelet where three different strings are braided together to form a bracelet. Each string maintains its separate identity, but together the string makes a pretty interesting bracelet. Braiding is the current practice in Maine. Blending is when funds from several sources are combined to support the school-wide plan. Funds are expensed and invoiced under one funding code. Think of adding colors together to make another color, yellow and green make blue. This is not a common practice in Maine. This slide only presents a high level view of braiding and blending. Stay tuned for a more in-depth webinar on how to fund school-wide program, programs using blending and braiding. Regarding the budget for Title I school-wide programs, all funds can be consolidated to help support the school-wide plan CNA. Funding uses need to align with the intent and purposes of the ESCA statute and still must be allowable, necessary, and applicable. Schools can leverage their funds, local, state, and federal, to best meet the needs of students as determined by the school's continuously updated school-wide plan CNA. A school can upgrade their instructional program, i.e. current math program, as long as the school and district can demonstrate that it is still meeting the intent and purposes of the statutory requirements of ESEA. For example, a district cannot reduce local or state funds to a school because the school receives Title I funds and is using these funds to upgrade the whole school instructional program. ESEA funds are supplemental and a school should still be able to operate in the absence of ESEA funds. Here are a few more allowable expenses for schools with Title I school-wide authority. Support for online learning, curriculum, digital, instructional materials, technology, counseling and mental health, instructional support services, behavior support strategies for online environments, professional development and other support to improve online instruction, 
coordinating with, the in, with institutes of higher education to provide access to post-secondary courses. Reminder, keep in mind that the notice from the previous slide regarding the intent and purposes of ESEA funds. Let's get back to what do you know, responses and answers to the 10 true and false statements. All the responses are false. To recap and summarize, comprehensive needs assessments outline how school, local, state and federal resources will be used to, to meet the needs of students school-wide. Title I and other ESEA funds may be used for activities and strategies designed to raise the achievement of the lowest achieving students, as identified by a school's school-wide plan, CNA. All teachers and ed techs in the school must meet state certification requirements. Parent notification is not required for students requiring additional services. However, parents are involved in the development, revision, and review of the school-wide plan, CNA. Professional development is open to all staff to support all students and promote whole school reform as based on the school -wide, school school-wide plan, or CNA. All resources can be used to improve the achievement for all students and promote school reform while providing additional assistance to the most at-risk students. What are the next steps? Schools with Title I school-wide authority need to review, update, and implement their multi-tiered systems of support to reflect a school-wide program. Review, update, and implement Title I documents, parent family and handbook, student handbooks to reflect a school-wide program. Review, update, and implement Title I parent involvement policy to reflect a school-wide program. Review, update, and implement school CNA goals and action steps. Review, update, and allocate budget and funding sources to reflect a school-wide program. And six, explore, consider, and possibly implement continuity of learning in a non-traditional remote distant learning setting. For all schools identified for Tier 3 supports with approved school-wide CNAs, school-wide status will go into effect on July 1st. For any school applying for school-wide status for FY 2021, the due date for submitting school-wide applications is July 1st, 2020. When school-wide approval is granted, an approval email is sent to the principal and the ESCA coordinator, along with a copy of the CNA rubric. In closing, welcome to the wonderful world of Title I school-wide authority. If you have specific questions, please feel free to reach out to your regional program manager, link provided, or Jackie Gedbout or me. Our contact information is provided on the slide and on the ESCA webpage. Happy leveraging. Thank you.